Windows 11, Windows 11, Windows 11. Google is redeciding when they're gonna get rid of cookies and Tesla redeciding whether or not they wanna keep their superchargers closed because they're kind of being forced to open them. Anyways, let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on this very here internets for the last time at this location. The next time I'm gonna do a proper hot news will be when I am living in Pennsylvania. In case you have no idea what I'm talking about, you can check out this update video that we did over on UFD Tech. But let's go ahead and talk about the the update that Microsoft is doing for Windows 11. It got officially unveiled at their June 24th event yesterday, where they showcased essentially what you can expect to see in it, which number one, let's just get it right out of the way. You have to have internet connection and a Microsoft account mandatory for Windows 11 home setups. This harkens back to the days where they tried to force this onto the Microsoft Xbox One. People lost their crap, and then they decided to backtrack on that because they realized it was a terrible idea. Not everybody has internet access, especially not internet access when it's convenient to activate Windows, but you know, they're gonna continue to try to forge ahead with making sure that you have to verify with their servers. They have all of your telemetry data and they can continue to track you, but it's gonna be free. So that's great. Microsoft 11 Windows is gonna be a free upgrade and it's not gonna take all that much to run. All you need is a 64-bit CPU, four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage. No more 32-bit support going on there. But if you purchased a PC in the last five to 10 years, you're most likely gonna be fine. You also need to have TPM version 2.0 in order to get it to work, which might be a problem for some systems. But in case you wanna see what it looks like, we can go through a little bit of the redesign that they showed off during their presentation. It's supposed to be this rounded glass look that they're going for, which honestly looks modernized. It doesn't necessarily uh, extremely scream that they copied from Apple because obviously they're taking a lot of intuition from Mac OS, especially with the taskbar being in the middle, but it's not necessarily a direct ripoff. They copied the homework, but made sure it looked like it, they didn't copy. Also, we're gonna be getting Android apps onto Microsoft natively through an Intel bridge technology that's happening. And in case you wanna get those Android apps, you have to do it through the Amazon App Store, which is really intriguing, especially because this probably is so that they can cut Google out of the picture as much as they can. Obviously, Microsoft has their own services that they want to promote, such as Outlook and whatever else they have that directly competes to Google. And so if they use Android, which is a very open platform, but they do it through Amazon, which doesn't have support for the actual like Google Gmail apps, then they can kind of have their cake and then just piss off Google at the same time so that you're more dependent on Microsoft than Google. Also, they announced that they're going to be natively integrating Teams into Windows 11, which is great, except for our Discord user who tried to set up Teams yesterday upon this announcement, which he found out that he needed to have a phone number in order to get a pin for it, but it turns out that phone number was just registered with an old Microsoft account that he doesn't remember, and then he tried to recover the password, he was able to do that, then he had to get another pin, but then they said he can't use the phone number because it's on another account, even though that wasn't true, and then once he actually got all that sorted, they said you can't get another pin because you've requested too many, try again tomorrow, suck it up buttercup. Teams is great. Microsoft has this down. It's been nailed. But good news though, they're kicking Cortana out of the boot experience. So you don't have to hear her annoying voice when you're trying to just reset Windows. It's not happening anymore. They're also rolling out Xbox Game Pass as a native part of the upcoming setup with Microsoft's Windows 11. And they're also going to be revamping the Windows Store. And one of the big things that they noted was that if you bring your own merchant setup to the Windows Store, you keep 100% of your revenues, which is a direct shot across the bow to Apple and their revenue share system. They're also gonna be implementing auto HDR, which hopefully is better than the current HDR system on Windows, which is just absolutely deplorable. It washes out things that have no business being washed out. It's just, it's nasty. Hopefully this works more effectively and direct storage is the big SSD software that's gonna make it so that you can get games to load a lot faster with different caching systems. And it's one of the big reasons why the Xbox series architecture is actually really good at loading time. So this is a big improvement, but you're gonna need Windows 11 in order to use that. However, they also announced that they're gonna be returning to one feature update a year as a big update and they're gonna be 40% smaller and hopefully install in the background so you don't have to deal with Microsoft screaming at you to reboot or forcing you to reboot. That's at least the idea. Obviously, a lot of this is just what Microsoft is saying at the current moment, especially with the internet connection, there might be pushback from the community.
opportunity to ask them to please not. And we might see that they might cave on it at some point in the near future. Also, the CEO of Microsoft, Satya Nadella, saying that he welcomes iMessage coming to the Windows 11 app store in case Apple wants to bring that on over. You can, we can be partners in everything. We'll get rid of Google, Microsoft and Apple working together to take them on. It's, it's great. It's the convergence of two trillion dollar companies. That would be all three, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, all three $2 trillion companies fusing together in some Voltron-like fashion to destroy everybody. But you don't want to destroy your health. Have you checked your furnace filter lately, huh? Well, you should, especially with today's episode sponsor, Filty. My friends, Filty is a Kansas-based startup that makes reusable nanofiber materials that can be converted into face masks or like this washable filter can be used as a furnace filter with their patent-pending nanofiber technology. It's proudly made 100% in the United States and it maintains its efficiency levels for over eight washes and it's good for up to two full years. And in one year in the United States alone, there are enough disposable filters that get tossed out yearly to wrap around the earth 157 times. That's too many. On average, a filthy washable filter will save you $100 a year as opposed to having to buy a disposable filter every three months, which is how frequently you're supposed to be swapping them out, folks. Don't forget, good quality air is something that you shouldn't sacrifice on. And with the filthy washable filter, it makes it a lot more simpler, a lot more cost efficient, and produces less waste. So big thanks again to them for sponsoring today's episode of Hot News. But Google don't want to sponsor cookies that much longer, but they're being forced to after the EU was kind of like, hey, what's your replacement for them? And they were like, we don't need a replacement. We're making all the money. And the EU was like, bruh. Anyways, they're gonna delay blocking third-party cookies in Chrome until 2023, especially as they work with the United Kingdom's Competition and Markets Authority in order to make sure that there's a different plan, especially for like a lot of economy stuff that rests on, you know, tracking people and collecting their data. It's it's a prime market, okay? I, the, the, Google needs to know how many sandwiches I'm watching. What does that mean? I don't know. And I don't know why we haven't had wireless laptop charging just prevalent everywhere, but Lenovo is trying to modernize it and bring it out with their wireless charger for their no Lenovo laptops. As you can see, you just plop it on right there. It uses Qi charging standard for up to 65 watts with efficiency of 93%, and it'll go on sale for $140 probably sometime in October. But what's not on sale anymore is crypto stunks. Let's get into the stunks crypto thing that I do here. <laughs> Bitcoin up 5.58% to nearly $35,000, just rocking it up today. Ethereum up 5% over $2,000 again, and Dogecoin up 16% to above 25 cents. That's a whole last quarter. GameStop closing down 3% to 2.1265, AMC down 2.75%, and BlackBerry down 3.58%. The stock's not doing so well, but crypto up. However, it's coming out from reports in China that 90% of China's Bitcoin mining has stopped, according to state officials. Obviously, take this with a massive grain of salt. This is coming out from the Global Times, and it's not quite clear if this is actually true, if this is just reporting, if this is just, you know, forward projection of them trying to say that they're in line when really they haven't done as much. It's hard to say, but with the report that many mining farms are going offline, you could expect a fire sale and all of these crypto mining stuff coming to you hopefully sometime soon. But Valve's tired of you trying to get things on sale on Steam in different regions, okay? People swip swap between different countries all the time to get the best pricing on the different Steam games that that are out there, Steam calling them tourists. They're done with those. If you switch your region on Steam, you're gonna be able to do that only once every three months, okay? If you're moving between countries and regions more frequently than that, it's your fault, okay? You're not allowed to play video games, actually. You're still allowed, to, you're just not allowed to buy them at the best price, okay? You're just gonna have to suck up bad pricing on your video games. But if you're a world traveler like that, okay, maybe you can afford it, I don't know. Maybe Tesla can afford to open their standard of superchargers to other electric vehicle companies and they're going to be doing just that in Norway, according to Norwegian officials, saying that should happen by September 2022, especially as European countries try to standardize the charging system for electric vehicles. It's probably gonna be more and more prevalent, but here in America, they're just gonna say, screw it, you have to deal with it. Proprietary everything. And proprietary folding devices is what Samsung's got. The Z Fold and Z Flip 3 renders are now showing up where you can see exactly what they look like. It looks like they're gonna get S Pen support on the Z Fold 3. Let me know if you're interested in folding phones down below in the comments. And let me know if you're interested in Xbox monitors because those are starting to roll out. Microsoft's starting to certify Xbox gaming monitors. Asus announcing their XG43UQ 43-inch 
4K, 120 hertz with two HDMI 2.1 ports and a DisplayPort 1.4, so you can use it for both PC and Xbox, which is actually kind of neat. I'm also, I would suspect that you can use this for PlayStation as well. I don't think it's gonna be locked down like that. Philips also announcing the Momentum 55.9. It's a 55 inch monitor TV that you can use for consoles as well as PC, which it just, I, I actually really like this. Like these are essentially TVs with DisplayPort and thank you, Microsoft. And thank you for watching this episode of Hot News, the last one that I'm doing here in my Florida office. It has meant a lot that you have stayed with us. It has meant a lot that you've supported us, especially as we transitioned over to the Hot News channel with the loss of Reese and Catlin back to South Africa and just all of the changes that have been going on. I thank you so much for being part of this community. I can't wait to start ramping up what we're gonna be doing in Pennsylvania. It's gonna mean a lot to see you guys that side and I can't wait to get back to you with hot news later on whenever it comes out. It's not gonna be regular next week, but I'll, I'll be around, okay? See you in the next one, friends. Cheers.